<laughs> what a great win by my Kansas Jayhawks at Rupp Arena against Ashley Judd and the Kentucky Wildcats. I do think Ashley Judd gave Kentucky a halftime speech there because they came out disgusted. Oh, jeez, man. Huh. <sighs> That's probably one of my favorite games in the regular season in a long time. Well, since last year against uh, Oklahoma. But it was a, it was probably one of Kansas' biggest wins in the regular season since I can remember. Uh, they beat Kentucky uh, by six points at Rupp Arena. Huh, they were down by 12. They were down by 12 on the road. And I guess I heard that Kentucky actually, in that arena, they set the, the record for loudest indoor... Stadium or loudest indoor noise, uh, whatever that is. Uh, so, uh, take that for what it is. I know that at Arrowhead we have the loudest outdoor, um, so and that's just kind of, it, I guess they just said, I guess they set the record there, but you know what? It's all for naught, it is all for stinking naught because the Kansas Jayhawks. Improved the 18 and 2, beating the Ashley Judd Nasty Wildcats. Woo! <laughs> it's been a it's been a crazy. <laughs> I'm so shirtless. I need to shave. Mm, pick the hair out. Pick the hair out. Pick the hair out. Um. Yeah. It's been a crazy, crazy week here, and I'm gonna get to. Uh, I'm going to get to the, the, the stuff that happened with the Royals. It was Royals Fan Fest this week. And I'm, I'm going to also give you my Super Bowl picks. Um, but Kansas City this week has been dealing with uh, mourning. We've been in mourning. We've had a uh, dealing with a broken heart, honestly. And that's because our boy, our starting pitcher, Jordano Ventura, was killed in a car wreck last week. And... The shock is still there. The uh, grief and the sadness that you feel, that we feel as a city, is still there. The heartbreak is still there. Uh, and you're just left wondering, man, how sad is this? And, and you really, I really just feel for his mother. And I continue to pray for his mother his and his family in the Dominican Republic, uh, they had his services this week on Tuesday in the Domin at the in the Dominican, and it it just I was watching different clips of that, and and it was really really emotional, really sad. Uh, so the Royals have a huge hole to fill, uh, both on a personal level and on a professional level, because Ventura added a lot of energy. Yeah, he was nuts. He was crazy. You never know what he was going to do, what kind of outing he was going to have. But he was a phenom. And and uh, he was, he was a, he, they, they said he was a baseball comet. And that's exactly what he was. Uh, and Ken, the Kansas City Star wrote a great article about it. He was, he was calling him a baseball comet. And he was, he, the, the thing that I'll remember about him is, is that I loved watching him pitch. Um... I loved watching him pitch because I, you never know what was going to happen. And, and he had such electric stuff that he could go, he could shut you out. Uh, he could go, he could no hit you. Any, any game, any game, you didn't know if it was going to be no hit or if he was going to get lit up. Um, because he still, he still was trying to control his emotions on the mound. And, and, and watching him go through that process of, of maturing. Because I do feel like he did take some steps into maturing. Now, I'm also of the opinion that he was right. Uh, the, Ventura around baseball was known for hitting people and starting fights uh, in, in, uh, in his day. And, and he, he started a handful of them, but you know what? I could go through every one of those fights and defend him on that. Uh, and it's not just because I'm a K or KC Royals fan, it's because you, a lot of times it was started by the people on the mound or he was re retaliating for uh, a teammate that had been hit or had been done that, that had been done something uh, wrong. He was retaliating a lot of times uh, for something that the other team had done to one of his teammates. 
a lot of times he was, uh, and, and he, I loved I loved that he would do that. He would always have his teams back. Uh, the only the only time, yeah, I mean the, there was there was a fight there was a fight in Chicago where I felt like he maybe took it too far. Where he, the funniest thing is is that he used an interpreter uh, to do interviews. But there was a play in, against the White Sox in Chicago where Adam Eaton hits a ball right at him and he gets it. He turns to him and he mouths the words. Clearly, in plain English, she understood that, and it it just it it uh you know, at that point you know you, you're just like all right you got to calm down man you got to calm down and I I do feel like that then after that that season calmed down they went on to win the World Series um, after that um, but he had his teammates back um, and even even in the the last year he he. Threw up Machado and got into a fight with Manny Machado of the Baltimore Orioles. That was still because Mach Machado wasn't innocent in that. No matter how many people want to say that that, no matter what Bo Buck Showalter that overrated manager says, Machado was not innocent that he he in that he called Ventura a bunch of names. He called Ventura uh, uh, out on a lot of stuff, and he also. Um, he also stood and looked at looked at his pitch in the, the at bat before he got hit for a long time. And looked at his hit because he thought it was a home run. He thought he he had hit a home run and he looked at his hit, and he ended up Ventura didn't like that. That's what happens. Like if you show the pitcher up on the mound, guess what? There's going to be some retaliation. And he also called Ventura some names, called him uh, this something something stupid feline, um, and. Ventura, you know, it wasn't. Uh, he 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 was he was uh, he was a good he was a good pitcher. All by all accounts, he was a really good teammate. He was a lot of fun to be around. Kansas City, the Royals are really gonna miss him. I'm I'm gonna miss watching him because I really enjoyed watching him pitch because he was such a, a dynamic pitcher uh, and he he had such electric stuff. And when he was on, he was he was one of the most amazing pitchers in baseball, and we they they were the Royals would not have, have gotten to back to back World Series without him. And there it's gonna be, he was he was their core, he was he was their top of the line starter there, he was their ace. They called him Ace Ventura, uh, and it's just incredibly sad that his life was taken at 25 years old. And and I I feel robbed as a baseball fan, but I. I just I can't imagine what his mom's going through right now and, and what his family is going through. Uh, pray for his family, pray for his kids and his wife uh, because uh, they're they're gonna feel this more than than we are in KC. Um, so yeah, uh, and, and uh, that the Royals Fan Fest was this week and I'm gonna play you a clip of Mike Newstock is talking about Ventura. They're emotional. The, the the team is is emotional. It's it's full of uh, they they love that guy and he was he was he was one of us, man. You know, a lot of players didn't like him around the league. A lot of players thought he was dirty. A lot of people thought he was dirty. Uh, he was our guy, though. Like we could say that about him, but no one else could, man. If if you, you know, we could say, ah, oh, he's you know he needs to stop it. He's a punk. He needs to stop it. He needs to grow up. But if anybody else says that from any other team in the league or any other fan base in the league, you're you know you're gonna there, there's gonna be fisticuffs. You know we're we're standing up for our boy. That's in house stuff. We can say that. Y'all can't. Uh, so that's yeah that's that just shows you the love that Mustak has had for Ventura and Hosmer and and, and Dyson were at, was at the funeral. So. It's just not going to be the same, man. It's not going to be the same, but prayers go out to the Royals. Uh, prayers go out to Ventura and his family. I uh, loved you watching you, Ace, man. Loved watching you, buddy. Uh, you'll be missed. Um, so, my picks for the Super Bowl. And honestly, uh, I, I actually want to review the Pro Bowl. Is there... It, it, is there anything more meaningless in sports than the Pro Bowl? I'm, I'm going to watch that game tomorrow night. And I my prediction, 
because Andy Reid's coaching. Alex Smith is starting in the Pro Bowl. All right, the Chiefs are going to win the Pro Bowl. They couldn't make the Super Bowl, but they're going to represent and win the Pro Bowl. All right? Andy Reid's going to open up his playbook, and he's going to th- he's going to find some plays that, you know, hungry pick passing. He's going to give it to, uh, I don't know. He's just going to, he, like, he Reid's just going to open up his playbook and just have the, the tight end passing, the, the running back uh, blocking. And the running backs usually do block. But yeah, Reed's Reed's just gonna open that, that up, and he's just gonna have a lot of fun, man. A lot of fun. Alex Smith is gonna throw deep downfield and not miss any receivers. It's gonna be so much fun to watch the Kansas City Chiefs beat the NFC in the Pro Bowl. The Pro Bowl, the Chiefs. You know, Reed's gonna open it up. This is the one game he didn't. He like he's. He didn't save any of that stuff for the playoffs. He saved it for the Pro Bowl. He didn't save any of his, you know, formations and offense, the, the trickery of the offense that would make throw the defense off, off balance. He didn't save that for the playoffs. He saved that for the Pro Bowl. He's opening this thing up. You don't know what you're going to get. Alex Smith is going to go for 300 yards and four touchdown passes. Disgusting. That's what the Chiefs do. Go Royals! I love me a good Bill Belichick press conference. Well, we're we're gonna see what they can do. The the funniest that I've ever heard Belichick was when he was playing the the Patriots were playing the Rams, and uh, Belichick comes out, and the Rams are are by all accounts uh, just a, a, a dumpster fire. They're a terrible team. They're a trash can of a team. So Belichick comes out in the press conference and goes, "Well, oh, I was looking at film, and uh, they 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 have a really good punter who can uh, really punt the ball." And <laughs> he was the punter. <laughs> he was giving props to the punter and only the punter for the Los Angeles Rams. <laughs> they 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 have a really good punter who can really punt the ball. Isn't that right, Ned? Yeah, yeah. You know, they just, you know, gotta, gotta get it in field position. You know, gotta, gotta, gotta put it in field position. You know, you know, Volky was on tonight. Volky was on. You know, he had to get the curveball working. So yeah, it. Um, I'm gonna go with the Falcons uh, because I, man, based on the beatdown that the Falcons gave both the Seahawks and and the uh, Packers. I I think that they're they're the better team, uh, and I know Brady's Brady, and anything can happen. But I think that the Falcons are the better team, uh, and I really hope that they can win because this would be their first Super Bowl. And Brady and Belichick, this is like an annual golf tournament for them. So uh, yeah, I mean it's it's uh, I hope, and I'm gonna actually predict that the Falcons will win 35 to 28. Uh, Brady has a lot of uh, Brady. Brady's really good. Um, and, and he'll he'll put the points up there, but I I do think that I'm not really that sold on the defense of the uh, the Patriots. I don't think that they can handle all of the weapons that the Julio Jones is amazing. Uh, they're running back. I forgot his name. I don't I don't have it off uh, hand. I'm I'm doing this kind of I'm winging this man. Look out. Go go Royals. I'm winging this. I don't know the, the name of the uh, Falcons uh, running back, but he's a stud. Uh, he's a stud. And they have a lot of playmakers on, on offense, and Matt Ryan is the best he's ever been right now, and he's probably the league's MVP. He should be the league's MVP. So I'm going to go with the Falcons winning this game 35-28. to 28, uh, And I really, I, honestly, like I didn't have any vested interest last year. I didn't really have that. I, I, I guess I did. I wanted Peyton to win last year, but uh, I didn't really like either team that much. I was rooting for Peyton last year against the Panthers, and uh, this year I'm, I'm really rooting for the Falcons. Honestly, I'm a Falcons fan, and I hope that they can win. And uh, let's uh, hey, go Falcons! Bring back Neon Dion. Come back, uh, uh, who, who, that's it. That's all you have. Uh, 
Jamal Anderson with the Dirty Bird. Now he's working at Quick Trip. Is that the Dirty Bird? Whatever, whatever, whatever he was doing back in. Chris Chandler, their quarterback in 1998, the last time they went to the Super Bowl. You know when the last time the Chiefs went to the Super Bowl? 1969? 1969. The Falcons went in 1998 with Chris Chandler as the quarterback. 1969 Chiefs couldn't win this game, could ya? Uh, this has been therapy session for me. R.I.P. Ace or Donald Vitter, you're gonna be missed. Uh, loved watching you, buddy. Uh, stay strong, Kansas City. Like me on Facebook and in real life, and uh, just uh, I don't know. Uh, give me a hug if you see me.